For more on this developing story, I'm joined now by our Cape Town correspondent, uh, Nadine Teron. Nadine, uh, could you please just give us the latest in terms of uh, uh, Volus's uh, situation? What do we know so far? So we know that Volus is stable and he is being treated in a hospital at the moment. Um, he was stabbed by a fellow inmate th uh, this afternoon, on Tuesday afternoon, but the attacker missed his heart and uh, he was struck by a um, knife, a homemade knife object in his stomach. Um, so we know he's stable, but we don't know how stable it is, he is and whether or not he will now still be released on parole on Thursday. And some South Africans on social media uh, are speculating that the attack was, um, you know, set up so that he wouldn't be released um, to, to postpone perhaps his release because the temperature in South Africa surrounding his release has been really uh, hot. And people, the majority, it's safe to say the majority of South Africans are not very happy about it. Uh, you talk about the temperature rising. Let's go back to 1993 when he committed that murder. Uh, just how big a deal was it in terms of South Africa emerging from apartheid? Well, at the time, um, is the, the uh, former ruling party, the apartheid government and several other parties, including the ANC and the South African Communist Party, were negotiating the terms um, or the potential for a new democratic South Africa. And when Ahani was assassinated so um, brutally and out of nowhere, it um, kind of threw the whole uh, negotiations off. And it triggered racial uh, riots across the country, and some would say it, it even caused a civil war, which eventually led the leaders uh, and negotiators to set an earlier date for South Africa's first democratic election. And some analysts say that had Hani not been assassinated, his party, the South African Communist Party, could have been a, a very strong um, competition to the ANC in the 1994 election. So his assassination really changed the whole history of, of South African politics. So Janus Wallace uh, still could be released. Uh, what can we just expect uh, in the week to come? So the ANC and the South African Communist Party and the Kusato Union are all protesting on Wednesday outside the prison where Valus uh, was kept um, tomorrow. Um, and then the, they already protested this weekend and the other, the radical economic freedom fighters, radical left, they've actually issued a statement saying that the constitutional courts having uh, made the decision of releasing Valush on parole has made a, a, a very bad um, error and that they it will have to live with the consequences. It was almost a veiled threat that the EFF um, issued in their statement. And Hani's um, widow, um, Limfo, is also furious. Um, and so are South Africans on social media because we know that the Honey family um, was never able to um, reach a reconciliation process with Valush, and that's partially because he never admitted the true intent behind the assassination. And there were rumors at the time that he was acting on behalf of a conservative party, but to this day, he um, claimed to have been acting independently. And some people, the ANC for one, are actually asking for a whole new inquiry into the death of Chris Honey. They want a whole new investigation. And they believe that Walush having withholding the information and the intent behind the attack um, makes him, uh, you know, not uh, an appropriate candidate for parole. Thanks so much. That is Nadine Teron from South Africa.